following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Let's hope we are getting through the Skype problems from yesterday and they're not going to pop up again. Thanks for joining us. Um, got a big number at 830. Just guys need to be aware of that, of course. Uh, U.S. Commerce Department, gross domestic product, Q3, 830. We're going to look at the bonds. We're going to look at the S&Ps. Luckily, we'll be live when that's happening. And uh, a couple other things on the board. Make sure you get your Nike self-lacing sneakers for 700 bucks. Just, you know, put that on the uh, list for the holidays here. I think they're out today. Um, corporate profits also out at 830. Um, consumer confidence at 10. And I think that's the normal consumer confidence from the Michigan survey. Those guys used to call me. It's a slanted survey because if they find somebody who will listen to the questions for 45 minutes like I used to do, they'll just keep calling you back. State Street Investor Confidence at 10 o'clock, too. So, All right, so we got that out of the way. And it's nighttime here in the Philippines, 9 o'clock. I hope you guys are having a good morning there in the States. All right, so let's take a look at crude. Uh, this is something been kind of keeping around now. Forty six sixty three. I actually got stopped out of this trade on the short side yesterday, but uh, back in it again. Um, really think that crude's got some more headwinds ahead of us, ahead of itself here, and I think the dollar, going to that dollar, looking at the dollar, looking at the strength of the dollar, and looking at uh, the situation that we talked about yesterday, really about not shorting against this unfair high around 101.54, just kind of waiting patiently until we either get down to support 99.74 or start getting daily closes uh, above, again, 101.54. So that's not going to bode well for any commodity out there. And we're going to hit January beans really quick because John from Philadelphia called yesterday, talked about, you know, maybe there's a good chance to be able to short this thing up here. We talked about letting this thing gravitate, or I did. I think he was a little ahead of me, a little bit higher, um, around 1050. So we're starting to kind of key reverse on a weekly below there. The daily looks really good. Your targets, if you're going to play defense on this trade, 1050, above 1050, the uncle point above there. Uh, your targets are 20, 1025, 1026 down below. That's just using the profiles and uh, being able to leverage some of the inflection points. I mean, this is really a cool scene right now. Uh, good to really see this not wanting to stay above that fair auction on January beans. Let's hit the notes because I know there's going to be some action here around 830. Um, and we're going to hit the S&Ps too really quick before the first break is upon us before we're summoned to go to break. Here's the uh, daily on the 10-year. Uh, still talked about really not you know, tr playing the odds and uh, looking at where the leverage is. Still turning the rents the same way on the 10-year. Um, on the downside, there, you know, we talked about the start.
Okay, guys. Um, we're going to probably do a call in again today, like we did yesterday, because it seems that Skype is not finished having their issues. I think there was a global problem identified yesterday with Skype. So, if we have one more drop, which is how we go into TFNN every morning for this show, we're going to hit the 727 number. And then I'm going to have the higher voice that Jay likes if he's on listening today. Um, so, we were talking about the 10 year. You do have a chance to play defense on this trade, on the contra trade below 125.16. But remember that report is coming out. And it's probably better to just let things settle out after the GDP number and trade the reaction is still the initial action on the 10 year. Let's take a look at the S&Ps. Uh, yesterday, you know, we talked about looking at the 240s. Let's just kind of revisit that scene and talked about, you know, support was going to be at around 2198 and a half and I think we got down to 2198 and a quarter. And we've kind of rallied off of there. The 240s are continuing to kind of scaling up here. Um, but, at, you know, while we were doing the show, there's that, you know, 9 o'clock area that we were getting into at the end of my show yesterday. You know, we started to have this happen. I'm going to go to our scanner. A lot of people use just this feature alone in this scanner, and I'm going to tell you why. Let me just take out the middle ground. A lot of people will use these crossovers to trade futures on the short-term 60-minute. And I've got a little uh, painting issue on my monitor right now, so if you if you see that sketch around, I apologize. Um, but we started crossing in negative territory right on the open yesterday on the 60-minute crossovers. That means, you know, these statistics got heavier uh, on the downside, and again, the market has to be open for these stocks to register and cause these numbers to happen. But right on the opening, we started to get a little short-term breath negative, and a lot of people will look at these crossovers just to get the kind of what side of the market do I block out on the short-term trade desk and P futures. Looking at this chart, because all of the underlying components of the S&Ps are really calculated, so you can get a quick glance right there when those short-term numbers or the long-term numbers are starting to change. Um, we still are, still are extremely long-term breath positive and, and intermediate breath positive. So again, that's why yesterday I was saying the long-term trade still is to, you know, we're, we're above profiles in the weekly and daily. We're using the 240s to guide us up. The long-term trade is still to buy support when you can. But if you're going to trade ultra short-term futures, you've got that in your favor. How are we doing on audio, guys? Still good? All right. So what do you do before the report? Probably not be in the market. Um, I think you do have a chance on the long term now since you've got a profile that has appeared. And I think we were talking about profiles locking in yesterday or the day before. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we come back, folks. FNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, so, we're finishing up with the SPs and Jay, I think my voice is high today, so maybe you're happy. 2207.45, that is a new unfair high that's this profile is locked in. Remember, you know, we had that kind of daily yellow peel back in the scanner. Um, if you guys have it, you notice that. That's 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 a sign to take some weight off on the intermediate. You know, it's a little bit of a scary trade right now with the breath situation the way it is. Um, we'll have to see how the market opens. But if you're going to look for shorts, this is a much better scenario uh, than yesterday. Now, a lot of times when you have price action dive back into a profile, a lot of times that you know, all bets are off. That whole profile can really be explored because that is the fair auction. And I'll, I'll kind of go back in time and uh, show you some of these things. You know, we we get outside, we dive back in. There was a lot of noise there. But a lot of times we'll explore the entire fair auction after we kind of reverse outside and come back inside into these areas. We reverse back up there. We kind of start looking for the other, other side of the box, so to speak. This isn't one of those scenarios yet. Um, but if you're looking to be a hero and, and put some shorts on right now, your targets now can be that 2184, that weekly unfair high, down into 2173. So you've got a much better scenario, really, uh, than you did yesterday because you can play defense here. Now, uh, this profile really, in essence, uh, started yesterday but it could have disappeared, and that's why we, you know, on non-Bloomberg terminals, we really paint the bar yellow and don't try to fiddle around with showing the profile and then having it disappear back and forth. So you do have some things in your favor here on the short side. It's it's definitely against the long-term trend up, but, you know, can we look at 20, 2184 and 2173 as targets on the downside with a really good risk-reward scenario, I might add? The answer to that is yes. Okay, so that's the ultra. Put gasoline on your account. Trade against the trend news this morning. 
I'm just kidding. There's an opportunity there, and there's a great risk reward scenario, really, if you're looking at the short side there. Um, taking a look at gold let's go back to Steve Rhodes got a really good question here and uh, he always has good questions so orange bar back inside its new box okay so we were talking earlier that these 240s were kind of scaling up, these profiles. And, you know, we always talk about the longer-term time frames take precedence over the shorter-term time frames. And I really will say that till the day I die. A lot of really big traders, and I think Steve Rose does a really good job at this in general, um, he kind of looks at multiple time frame profiles and, you know, you you really start licking your lips when you, when you have multi- kind of time frame confluence situations. I don't think I've ever used the word confluence outside of the trading arena, but we're going to use it again. When you have a confluence of, of things going on on multiple time frames, and, you know, in this instance, you, you really don't on the short side, and you don't really have them going on the long side. Uh, but that daily unfair high that's sitting there, um, like I said, you know, a lot of times these fair auctions are completely explored, and I tend to kind of look at these dailies as overriding what's going on with the 240s. And the good news is, is we, if we start breaking down below 2200, which is that kind of psychological barrier anyway, I think we actually start, you know, see. Hi guys, are we back? Okay, I tell you what, we are going to probably call on the landline after this break because it seems like Skype's having issues again today, but um, I haven't had any issues with it all day and maybe it's something between us and TF and N there. Um, but what I was saying is, you know, the sign of a really good trader is to know when to step on the gas and really increase the position size. When you start, when you when you get in, if you're looking at this trade with the line of defense above this 2207 here that I'm showing on our dailies, if the 240 kind of trailing stop regulator of the trade up that I'm showing here starts breaking below 2200, which is the you know bottom of the short term profile, then if that starts happening, you could start increasing, you know, maybe go from one contract to two contracts or whatever, um, and start having some really good possibilities of that 2184 being looked at as a target along with this possible 2173. So you've got the start of a decent risk reward scenario that you could possibly add to if we start getting some movement below 2200. So that's the way I'm looking at the S&Ps right now. And I've belabored the S&Ps to death here, so we're going to move on. Gold. Uh, let's look at this. So yesterday, uh, we were talking about this thing starting to look like it was starting to break stride and starting to hang out above 240s for the first time in a while. But, you know, again, we, we always talk about, you know, where's the long-term leverage? Where's the weekly? Where's the daily? You know, what really is trading with the trend in general? This was a contra trade we talked about yesterday that, you know, if you're going to go along, you've got a chance to really kind of pick a little battle here. But, you know, trading with the long-term trend and no hints of new profiles attempting to appear or even, you know, becoming enforced down here on the weekly or the daily, you really are trading, you know, against the odds, just like we had talked about uh, 
on some other products. But that's what stops are for if you try to pick that battle there. But uh, right now, you know, gold, uh, i got to tell you, I mean, I think the dollar is probably going to go higher. That's not going to bode well for this thing either. So um, I'm a big fan of, of using the long-term view on things and blocking out one side of the marketplace. And in this case, you know, continuing to block out the long side on gold. So I think we're going to our next break here, and uh, we'll probably be back on the landline just a bit. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, somebody pointed out that I had uh, showed December gold. I just had, thanks for saying that. I had the wrong symbol in my watch list there. I had, I have it differently down below, and uh, I just didn't adjust it up top. So thanks for that. S similar charts. Here, here's the uh, the February 07, or February 17 gold. It's very similar profile action there. <laughs> um, okay, so. We're finishing up with gold there, and um, 
trying to juggle things and get on the landline there. Lost my train of thought. Um, got a report that's just come out, live prices here, uh, GDP numbers. And let's take a look at what's going on. Here's the uh, notes, what's going on. You know, really kind of blocking out the the long side on the notes still. Now you've got the report coming out. Um, looks like they're caving in a little bit here. Not too badly, though. Uh, here's the S&Ps. Coming off just a tad, nothing to really write home about. And uh, 2207. Excuse me, 2207.45 is that lid there, and I uh, would love to see this thing drip below 2200, and then I think 2184 would be a possible foregone conclusion on uh, the s and Isn't it amazing? We're hoping for like 15, 20 point S&P pullbacks as a massive victory. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, let's take a look at a couple of Big tech stocks, we hadn't looked at. I'm sure David White has been tracking the heck out of these things. Um, you know, here's Apple, and this is, again, you know, this is, this is one of the really cool trades is when we do dive back into profiles. Like I was talking about earlier on, on Apple, that was the case. A lot of times you will see the other side of the profile. And on Apple, a week and a half ago, whenever it was, uh, low was 104.08, and that unfair high, unfair low is 103.90. So it got very close, but that was the tr so-called trigger right there. And that's why, you know, we try to be patient. Looking at that bean trade um, that we showed earlier, that January bean, let me just go back to that for a second. This is kind of cool how this is setting up here. So uh, John from Philadelphia had some really good comments fundamentally about, you know, some, some reasons that that could happen. Uh, but the cool news is technically you've got a chance to play defense and you've got some, you know, 1025, 1026 and even lower on this product. And it looks like, you know, we're starting to come off this morning below that. There's a, there's that 1050 area kind of got in there and then, hit it and retrace down. So really cool scenario when you dive back into the profile from above. We were on Apple and I went and went out in left field again. So let's come back. All right. So, so what do you do with Apple now? So here's the dailies, you know, love to see a daily close. Now I think it's a do nothing trade right now. I don't like going long Apple. Um, I think, you know, the market could experience possibly a little bit of a pullback here just to kind of do its thing in the fair auction on the dailies on the S&Ps. But you'd really want, if you, if you can get a daily close back in the box here on the dailies, 110.96 below there, I think you're in business for this thing to start coming off. But see, if you never get that and you continue to go higher, then all you did was just miss out on getting stopped out. All righty, let's hit the NASDAQ here. Um, this is obviously, and here's the weekly on the December contract. There's that uh, really cool place to play defense there, 4901.50. And here's the, uh, the daily situation on the NASDAQ. So this is all information in the scanner, by the way. And Love to see the market open. I'd love to see the 60-minute breath on the S&Ps kind of stay negative. And then, you know, this NASDAQ situation, if we can, you know, start migrating back down below. I cannot see at night here. 48.57. Uh, I think you can get some momentum on the downside on, on, the, on the NASDAQ. Again, it's a little weaker instrument relative to all the tech nightmares that are going on, I guess, in the NASDAQ relative to uh, some of the stocks that are just doing moonshots in the S&Ps. Um, let's take a look at David White's favorite long, Tesla. I'm just kidding. All right, so 
This is kind of interesting. So we've got a new profile on a long-term weekly on Tesla. So this kind of appeared yesterday morning. We're kind of smack dab in the middle here. New one for highs, 208.17, 181.94. I personally think 181.94 is going to be revisited here. Um, but you've, you've got a get my charts saved here you you've got a situation on the on the daily where you kind of have broken out here above daily profiles but you know I think Tesla is a crapshoot at best right now and it's just really looking at this stage looking always to kind of you know hit resistance points and then put that trade on instead of trying to buy this thing um, you know a lot of fundamental reasons out there for, for that statement. Let's take a look at Home Depot. All right, so this is another one that, you know, if, if you look at the way these profiles have acted and you, and you look at maybe diving back down into the profile from above, this is a nice little possible trigger here. Um, a weekly close would be kind of putting the stake in the ground as far as hammering that home. But again, you've got a chance to play defense here, 13074 on the short side on Home Depot. I you know, think these rates are going to ultimately start creeping into things associated with the housing market. Um, Shanghai, you know, this has been a really cool long that we've been talking about. Just want to hit the uh, global scene here. And this is the reason why you don't short this right now. When these China A shares get going, man, they really can move. So when we started consolidating above profiles here on the weekly, don't see a lot of disturbances here. There's really no reasons to start looking at the China market in any other way than, uh, than long right now. We're going to hit silver when we come back. I think we're still in the DEES contract here. Some of you guys. I think we're going to go to commercial break right now, and we're going to probably stay on the landline, guys. So stay tuned. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And I think we've got John from Philadelphia on with us. John, are you there? Hey, John. Uh, great to talk to you again. Thanks for taking the call. Yeah, always. Man, good call on the beans yesterday. A little reversal there. Hey, John, I, uh, I, uh, I'm calling in about gold and a couple of other things. But uh, before I ask you that question about that, on beans, uh, yeah, they did reverse. I just share this with you uh, to remind myself, frankly, on soybeans. Soybeans is becoming very China-centric, much like the trade in iron ore and steel uh, and uh, things like copper. And what you saw, of course, in beans here the past week is that much of the price increase, much of the buying has come during Globex hours, say after 8 p.m. New York time. And of course, that's right in the heart of morning over there in uh, Shanghai, Beijing. So yeah, you got to stay on top of that if you're trading the beans, I think. Right. Um, how much, I mean, if you don't mind me asking a couple of questions about that, I mean, how much of the rally was any type of I mean, anything associated with tariff, tax, blah, 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 from a new regime over here? Was that any, in your mind, any any form of, of what happened with the bean rally? Uh, John, not to my, yeah, not to my knowledge. My suspicion on the bean rally is uh, threefold. One, uh, there there is a very reliable seasonal pattern of beans rallying from, say, November 10th into Thanksgiving. That's number one. Number mm -hmm. two with the, uh, is the falling Chinese yuan currency versus the dollar. And what, what has happened here, of course, China is a big import buyer of United States beans, as you know. Right. And uh, much of the orders that China places are not priced right when the orders are made. And what's been going on the past three weeks with the dollar surging versus the yuan is that evidently buyers or, or buying entities over in China who had placed their orders to buy this stuff, you know, a month ago, but had not mm -hmm. priced it, have seen the price of beans increase because of the falling yuan and are chasing it. And then lastly, Goldman came out to its clients and said, by uh, put more money into commodity indexes, which are heavily populated by beans and oil and other stuff. So I think those were the factors. Wow, good information. I've got the Ruan up uh, right now, and uh, Joey had talked about 6.9 and maybe even 7 on this thing. Um, looks like it's backing off a little bit now relative to the dollar. Um, but we had that, you know, profile appear above price act or below price action a couple of weeks, actually about a month ago, and uh, that was a very bullish technical sign. But uh, what's where do you think this Chinese currency is going to end up relative to the dollar? You think that's it for it, or you think they're going to kind of just start doing some intervention? Or 
Yeah, I tell you, my, my reference uh, for that, John, is um, the uh, the uh, the rationale put forth by Kyle Bass. He's uh, he's long the dollar yuan, short the yuan. And the idea, evidently, is that there's something on the order of um, one or two trillion dollars of loan losses in, in loans made in China the past couple of years, and that this is the driving factor behind capital outflows from China and a shortage of dollars to repay dollar-based loans taken out in China. And uh, so he sees higher prices for dollar yuan, uh, and that's not a trading call, but that it, that kind of makes sense to me. Right. Well, uh, were we going to talk about gold in India a little bit? Uh, yes, John. I wanted to ask you this. I know you <laughs> speak with Joey in Hong Kong and Steve right. Banger in Chicago regularly. Mm -hmm. And you were recall back on November 8th, very mysteriously and coincidentally, right as we were having our election, the country of China unleashed this, un, this, this, this huge, hugely disruptive currency deal where, where, they, where the government of, China, of uh, India said to its populace, and mind you, that's a billion people, that's, that's lots of people doing business every day, said all right. your currency is effectively null and void. <laughs> and uh, uh, the 500 and 1,000 rupee notes, and mind you, the 500 rupee note is like our $10 bill. They said that's no good anymore. So if you uh, if you had cash at home in your pocket, you know, in the in the in the uh, uh, your bedroom drawers, all of a sudden you're stuck with paper that's worthless by government decree. And um, I'm wondering if you think this is going to precipitate gold selling out of India and depress the gold price. You know, I you know that may just. Uh, it, you know, already be factored in. I, I'm not a big fan of of just buying gold anyway, just because it, there's really not been any you know serious technical reasons to start looking at you know having a floor on it in general. So that's really the only thing I'm looking at is the technicals. I hear what you're saying. Um, that was weird when they did that. I mean, when, when was that? About a week and a half ago. Yeah, it was November 8th, the day of our election. Okay, okay, the day of the election. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to get Joey on to talk about that and or Steve because um, they've got a, a really good kind of macro sense um, so on some of the fundamentals. But, I would um, love to hear that conversation, John. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know what? I'll, I'll try to get them on. Um, you know, I'd love to get them on to actually see if I can pick off Joey for the next short segment. Um, but Skype is just acting possibly a little weird still, and uh, that's how we usually pipe them in. But I tell you what, I will try to get him. If you're going to be on tomorrow morning early, I'll try to get him on the first segment or two, and, and we'll just and maybe you call in and we can just bang around that concept. I uh, I'd, I'd love listening to the two of you or the three of you discuss that issue with gold sitting right down here at 1180. I'm just wondering how low is low if we happen to break underneath this level by much. So, anyway, uh, thanks for your time, John. Love your work. Uh, yep. Good to talk to you. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, John. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've got our currency machine up right now, but let me, let me go back to gold and uh, talk about this 1180-81 area I, I, that uh, John from Philadelphia was talking about. Um, you know, the, the only – glimmer of hope was kind of getting above these 240 profiles yesterday. And, um, you know, again, that was a, a trade against the long-term trend down. There's really, and this is what I was saying when he was on the phone, here's, here's the weekly, here's the daily. Um, you know, so you, you had another lid after you broke down the weekly below that 1252 area uh, to really kind of sell this again. And I'm, I'm trying not to meaning to be a Monday morning quarterback, but uh, there really is no new floor down here to really start leaning against to go long, technically. And I think some of the things John just said, there's a lot of things that kind of unfold here, and a dollar 
could possibly go higher, which is not a good thing for gold going higher also. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. <clears throat> Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, garlics, butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show, and I think we got lucky. Joey, are you there? Hey guys, it's a pretty busy trading day here. Uh, yeah, I'm here. It's a, it's an exciting day out there. Um, hey, look, uh, we had a caller, um, very astute trader that's uh, in the den, respect his opinion a lot, was asking some questions that um, really I thought you might be able to lend some credence to. So I'm going to put you on the spot. And we got about sure. four minutes, four minutes left here. Was you know when <clears throat> talking about the Indian kind of, you know, basically deleting the uh, the 500 rupee notes and some other things and how that might relate to some people exiting gold or India putting pressure on the price of gold even more so. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, well, um, basically they haven't been able to buy gold um, because of that. So um, it definitely has affected the gold market and uh, – but, you know, predominantly, I don't think that alone can affect the gold market that much. Um, really, okay. we're breaking down because of the dollar. Um, right. And, you know, a lot of people piled into gold ahead of uh, the elections. 
um, and ahead of this uh, Europe boat. Um, and what, what they're getting is the opposite right now. So there's a lot of squaring of positions. Um, I don't think at this point I would be necessarily, you know, starting new short positions in gold uh, because it's dropped quite a bit. I think we're going to, you know, around 11, uh, 1080 to 1150, it's a big, big range, but it's, um, uh, you know, that's kind of the area that I'd be looking to buy gold again. Um, Where's yeah, that? so I'm... I'm yeah, what were you saying? What range are you? What what's the trigger point on gold there? Uh, it's, uh basically 1080 to 1150. I mean, that's that's you know right right down at 1080 levels kind of cost. So um, you know that that's a good natural place for it to rest, anyways. Right. Yeah. It it uh, looks like there's just air here until 1080. Yeah. You, About you know? 1080. Yep, yep. Um, I think it'll stop. There's there's a little bit of a support at 1150, uh, but I don't see it necessarily stopping there at 1150. I think uh, you know the more natural uh, support is somewhere around um, uh, around the 1050 1080 level. Um, but yeah, uh, this is it's interesting because gold positioning has gone straight down again. So. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh boy, look at this markets here. Uh... Okay. okay, I tell you what, um, we're gonna hit the S and P's really quick. We got about forty seconds here. Um, seeing a lot of comments about the uh, twenty two hundred area in seems to be holding on those two forty on for lows right now, guys. But you know, uh, want you to look at the scanner as the market opens. Take a look at the uh, aggregate short term sixty minute profiles. If we continue to stay relatively negative on that, um, I still think you can, you know, bank some shorts against this 2207 area, Joey. It's the top of our new daily box here um, because we had kind of reversed and uh, yesterday, and then um, now you got a chance to play defense. So uh, below 2200 could get some momentum there on the short side, guys. And uh, I like what Steve uh, Rose is saying in the den there about that. Well, guys, you've been great. Joey, thanks for joining us on this last break about the gold trade. All right, guys, stay tuned. DFNN all day. Pick it up again tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.